Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Aisha Munk and I'm here to break down the science behind things that impact our daily lives as women, a very important topic, PMS and PMDD. These are experiences many of us go through, yet they're often misunderstood. So in this video I'll explain. First, the hormonal changes throughout your menstrual cycle. Second, what PMS and PMDD are. Third, why these conditions happen. And fourth, and most importantly, how to manage them. So let's get started. The menstrual cycle is a monthly process that prepares the body for pregnancy. It's div divided into four main phases. First, the menstrual phase, days one till five, when the uterine lining is shed, which is your pe period. Second, the follicular phase, days 1 to 13, overlaps with the menstruation and continu continues until ovulation. Third, ovulation, usually on day 14, the release of an egg from the ovary. Fourth, the luteal phase, usually days 15 to 28, the body prepares for a possible pregnancy. As cycle lengths can vary, these days need not always be the exact ones, but luteal, luteal phase usually has a length of 14 days. Now we're going to talk about the hormonal changes by phase. During the menstrual phase, estrogen and progesterone are at their lowest. This hormonal dip triggers the shedding of the uterine lining, leading to the bleeding we know as our period. Because hormonal levels are so low, it's normal to feel more tired, emotional or low energy during, during this time. Next we enter the follicular phase, where your body starts preparing for ovulation. There's two important hormones involved there, FSH, which st stimulates the growth of ovarian, ovarian follicles and which makes estrogen rising gradually, thickening the uterine lining and also commonly boosts mood and en energy. This is often the feel-good phase of the cycle as higher estrogen levels can improve focus and motivation. On day 14, um, ovulation occurs, triggered by a spike in LH. Estrogen peaks right before the ovulation, making you feel energized and for many in increasing libido. FSH and LH surge to release the egg for the ovula ovulation. This is your body's most fertile time and many people feel their best here due to the hormonal high, but this does not necessarily need to be the, the case. Some women also feel low energy on the day of ovulation. It varies. After ovulation, we enter the luteal phase, where progesterone becomes the dominant hormone. Progesterone rises to support a potential pregnancy. It has calming effects for some people, but not for everyone. Estrogen declines slightly, but my, my, may have a mid-phase bump sometimes. However, toward the end of this phase, both progesterone and estrogen levels drop which can lead to the symptoms of PMS or PMDD. Now that we have the basics, we are going to talk about what PMS is. PMS or premenstrual syndrome refers to a range of symptoms caused by hormonal changes during the luteal phase. These symptoms can include mood swings, irritability, fatigue, bloating, tender breasts and food cravings. About 75% of menstruating people experience PMS, and while it can be un very uncomf uncomfortable, it usually doesn't disrupt daily life in total. PMDD, on the other hand, or premenstrual dysphoric disorder, is a severe form of PMS that affects about 3 to 8% of people who menstruate. It's considered a medical condition because of its intense impact on mental health and is way more severe in its symptoms than PMS. Symptoms include severe mood swings, intense irritability or anger, depression, sometimes including suicidal thoughts, severe anxiety or tension. PMDD significantly disrupts daily life and often requires medical treatment. So why do PMS and PMDD happen? PMS and PMDD occur, occur due to sensitivity to hormonal fluctuations, especially in the luteal phase. For some, the drop in estrogen and progesterone affects serotonin, a neurotransmitter responsible for regulating mood. In PMDD, this sensitivity is amplified, possibly 
due to genetic factors leading to more severe symptoms, but science doesn't know. So how can we manage PMS and PMDD now? There are effective ways to manage PMS and PMDD from lifestyle changes to medical treatments. For PMS, for example, regular exercise and balanced diet can reduce symptoms. Supplements like magnesium, calcium, and vitamin B6 could, can be helpful. Stress management, of course, techniques like yoga or mindfulness can also make a big difference. And self-care, of course. For PMDD, antidepressants like SSRIs can stabilize mood, especially in the luteal phase. This can also be done with PMS sometimes, by the way. Studies have shown that low dose of serotonin reuptake inhibitors called SSRIs taken during the luteal phase can relieve symptoms. Hormonal treatments such as birth control pills can also help regulate fluctuations. Therapy, especially especially cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, can address emotional symptoms. Healthy lifestyle changes still play an important role here. If PMS or PMDD symptoms interfere with your ability to function, it's essential to seek help. There are treatments available and you don't have to go through this alone and you don't have to experience this your whole time of menstruation. The menstrual cycle is a complex pro process, but understanding the hormonal changes and their effects can empower you to take control of your health. Whether you are tracking your symptoms, making lifestyle changes, or seeking professional support, know that, it, it, that help is available. Thank you for joining me on this deep dive into PMS and PMDD. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more vi videos like this. Thank you and see you next time.